Salutations, Rangers General Bradley One, back at you with some more history today. So, today we're talking about weapons. Not just any weapons, the quintessential weapon. The king of weapons. Even though not literally, but in terms of pop culture, it is. We're talking about swords. All types of swords. And in fact, today we're going to be giving you a brief definition of what swords are. Names of different swords, little swords, big swords, whatever you want. Now, disclaimer. This is the modern interpretation, the modern definition of what blades and swords are. Back in the day, ye olden days, a sword was a sword. You know, if it was a long sword, it was long. So it was a long sword. If it was a short sword, it was short, and it was a short sword. These are modern interpretations. So use them accordingly and don't be surprised if you read something and it says no this this was this was a two-handed sword and it turns out but but that doesn't look like a two people back in the day didn't care about these types of things they had names and names were names which is why in german a sword was called a knife yeah but that was also because of you know a law which stated that you had to have a license to carry a sword so if you and I was like, this is a sword this is a knife <laughs> Yeah, loopholes, huh? So, let's start off. We start off with uh, the term knife. Now, knife is generally used as a small one-handed uh, tool with a semi-short blade. It's used in cooking, eating, foraging, it's a knife. Generally speaking, it's pretty short and it can be used in whatever manner. N knives are everywhere, knives have been everywhere, knives will be everywhere. This is a knife. You know what a knife is. Uh, then we come to a dagger. Now, a dagger is a, is a bit longer than a knife, about one and a half times two times the length of a knife. Uh, it, its main thing is that we see that the point is far more acute, or well, in some cases it's curved. And in the for the acute daggers, those will be carried by knights, and often with a primary way a knight would end a fight. Meaning, simple... You'd grapple with an opponent, get them on the ground, you pull out your dagger, and you'd go for the eyes, or for the neck, or for the gaps in the armor. That's why the point isn't cute like that. Also, you guys have the term cloak and dagger, you know, shadowy business. A dagger is very easy to be concealed, very used for assassinations, etc., so on and so forth. And, yeah, that's pretty much that. And then we come to the next category, the short sword. Now, the short sword has many different forms. We have the Spartan style Cephos, which is really short. We're talking like 30 centimeters, like a ruler length here and there, 30 to 40 centimeters, and then get progressively longer and longer. The most iconic short sword, um, the Roman Gladius, was about 60 centimeters, 60 to 90 centimeters, give or take, you know, depending on what variant you used. And these were primarily used by Hoplite style or Hoplite inspired infantry. You know, the Greek style heavy infantry. The spears were the primary weapon, the short swords were secondary, and they were primarily meant to be used in formations. We have the Copus, which is a Greek style, or the Falcata style as well, that are used for overhand chopping. The Roman Gladius, used for stabbing. Pretty simple, short swords. You know. Uh, then we come to the arming sword, or the one-handed sword. Now, the arming sword and one-handed sword are um, basically... Here's where things start to get a little murky. Essentially, it's a one-handed sword that is longer than a um, short sword, so like 120 centimeters, give or take, but not as long as a two-handed sword or a long sword. And the first iteration, we have the Roman Spatha, which is type of which is a type of longsword and a type of arming sword, I beg your pardon. And mainly it had a one-handed handle. Look at the handle, it's made for one-hand usage. And here we start to see the many different variations, and it gets a little confusing because after the fall of Rome we have the Dark Ages and things weren't really documented well. So the Roman Spatha, which is an arming sword. And then we also have a Viking style sword. And you'll notice that Viking style swords there were very wide and relatively thick. Now in some cases, people have often referred to this as a broad sword. 
And again, remember, because they've heard the term back in the day, someone would have seen a sword that had a relatively broad blade and say, that's a broad sword. So keep that in mind. But that has been used to refer to broad type blades. And then basically an arming sword or one-handed sword is a blade that has about 125 centimeters long, has a one-handed handle. Plain and simple, broadsword fits in that category, that's pretty much it. And then we get to something which is known as a bastard sword. Now a bastard sword is essentially a arming sword with two hand, with a double handle to it. Uh, here again, it fits into that weird thing of this is modern day interpretations. I'm pretty sure if you go back there's something saying that this is not a bastard sword. Um, kind of rare, it's essentially an arming sword with a uh, two handed handle. We start to see with them eventually developing the idea of the long sword. And yeah, that's essentially what a bastard sword is, pretty simple. And then we also get into the different types. For example, this is a scimitar. Now a scimitar is can be a two-handed weapon or part of an arming sword. Also the messer also falls in that. Now the uh, messer and the scimitar are classified by their shape. They're very much curved blades as well. And again, technically they would be considered arming swords uh, if they had one handle and blade length, uh, two hands blade length again. Now, the, this really just does uh, depend on that. Now, we would not classify them as arming swords, uh, pop culture and colloquially, because they don't look like arming swords, but by modern definitions, they should be. But then take that with a grain of salt. Um, it's a one-handed sword. Back in the day, one-handed sword. People didn't really care. Plain and simple. And then we come to the most iconic sword, the long sword, or the the one hand and a half sword. Now notice I, I nearly said two handed, but it's not the two handed sword, it's a hand and a half sword. Because this sword can be used efficiently one handed or two handed. And it is the quintessential weapon of the medieval knight. Long sword in hand, clad in plate, it's typical guy, right? It is my favorite sword. Uh, and now long swords, they could be, as I said, a little bit longer than bastard swords, and some bastard swords are considered to be long swords, or they could be much longer uh, than, you know, uh, bastard swords. Um, but essentially, a long sword or a hand and a half sword is a sword with a double handed grip that is uh, light enough to be used efficiently with two handed and or one-handed. It can be used uh, with a shield, or in some cases another weapon, a dagger perhaps, or a buckler as well. So that's basically the definition of that. And in terms of like how long it generally is, you're looking at about... you know, it, it depends. The, the blade itself uh, 110, 130 centimeters, uh, including the handle, it would make it just about above 50. And you see, like, generally speaking, the increments happen in about ruler things. Generally speaking, 20 to 30 centimeters here and there. Not that that is not a rule. Again, it's just an observation. So keep that in mind. But that's essentially what a long sword is. And again, back in the day, if a song was longer than normal, be a long sword hand and half. And then we come uh, to something that is very much a unique classification. Uh, this is called, or some people, um, myself included, uh, Shadowversity. Really great channel. Love the channel. Uh, he actually has a video very similar to this one. Actually, it's the same topic. I recommend, I'll link it down below. Highly recommend you watch it. It has some excellent stuff. A uh, really, really great guy. Um, we, he calls it the War Sword, and I also refer to it as a War Sword, and many people refer to it as a War Sword. Basically, it's a cross between a great sword, or a two handed sword, and a long sword. So it's either a small great sword, or a rather long, long sword. Now, back in the day, this would probably be as a long sword. It's a long sword, big sword, long sword, great sword, two handed sword. But here we see it is not as big as a great sword, but it is pretty long. 
And again, it's kind of like that midway point where it just does depend on like what it is, but in all sections and forms and formats, generally speaking, it is referred to as a type of sword that is made to be used in conjunction with two hands. Generally speaking, you could use it with one hand, but it would not have the same operational quote and format uh, thereof. Yeah, so as for, you know, length of a war sword, no clue. Anything between, like I said, 150 centimeters for a long sword and like 2.2 meters for a great sword. No idea. Now, we come to the big boy of swords. And in my opinion, the most underrepresented sword because of how badass it is. We come to the great sword. The two-handed sword, Zweilhander, literally two-handed in German. It is the biggest sword, best sword, and it is the only sword, mind you, and great sword size equivalent of this, is the only sword that poses any type of threat to someone in armor. Um, you know, generally speaking, if you wore armor, you're pretty safe from a sword, unless it was a great sword, and even a big great sword at that. And uh, there's the rapier and some fine acute tips, but as I said uh, when I mentioned the dagger, your main I your main idea was to get them on the ground and stab them with the dagger. But the great sword, excellent, 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 uh, effective against pike formations because when you have a massive two point two meter long, just huge big boy and for all of you american people that's about 84 85 inches so that's 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 a big sword and you're literally swinging that you need two hands to use this using it in one hand it is a death sentence but yeah that is a great sword and a great sword is the biggest sword period uh so now we're going to talk about uh, things other weapons that fall into the same categories. For example, uh, the Nodachi. Now, the Nodachi is a, a Japanese greatsword. It actually holds the title of the longest sword in the world of <laughs> 377 centimeters. Nearly four meter long fucking sword. <laughs> Lads. Come now, that, that's, that's crazy. Obviously, probably just for ceremonial uses, but but it's still nuts. Uh, yeah, the katana. Fun fact is, people people think the katana is a great is a long sword. Not actually. Uh, the predecessor of the katana actually was more of a long sword. The katana itself generally fell into the bastard sword or arming sword. But there are some katanas that could indeed be long swords. But more than not, they're not nearly as long as people think. And that just comes from the idea of people equating medieval knights to medieval samurai. That they were two very different cloths. They were similar, similar, but they were very different. They weren't just Eastern and Western versions of one another. You know, keep that in mind. Uh, the rapier, again, is interesting in that it is... It's one-handed, but it has a very long, thin, slender blade. So it is kind of like a hybrid between a... It's like a opposite bastard sword, in a, in a sense. One-handed, but very long blade. Again, very popular during the Renaissance, uh, people speculate it was very much a defensive weapon and, you know, the thin blade was very good for getting it in against armor, but there's a debate as to whether or not it was actually used on the battlefield, whole other thing. Um, but yeah, uh, that's where that falls into line and basically that's what a sword is. And what is a sword? Okay, a sword is basically a handle with a long piece of metal. And the metal needs to either be equal to the handle or longer than the handle. That's what a sword is. It is predominantly metal. And yeah, that is just a basic overview, a basic summary of swords. Different types. Knives, daggers, short swords, long swords, great swords, everything in between. Now, I'll say it again, and I said it and I'll say it again. This is a modern day modern day interpretation by modern historians trying to make sense of old world stuff. Back in the day, if it was a long sword, it was long sword. You know, it depends on what was what. So just take everything with a grain of salt. 
But uh, for those of you wondering what's called what, you guys now have something here. It's a good reference point. Again, I'll link Shad's video down below. He goes over that again. Excellent channel. Uh, as always, um, whenever I do these videos in the description, you have recommendations of history channels and lore channels, which I love and adore. Go ahead and check them out. But before you do that, like this video if you liked it, comment down below if you want to comment on a particular sword, or if I missed anything, let me know, always willing to learn. Uh, most importantly, subscribe, 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 please. Join this wonderful community, join the Ranger Trooper Corps. If you are a person who believes in honor, justice, and having fun, join up. Uh, turn on the notification bell so you will always be notified when I drop a video. You can expect a video at least once per week. And... Share this video if you know a historian or someone looking to get interested in any type of history. However, that's all for today. Thank you guys oh so very much for watching, and I'll catch y'all next time. Dismiss Rangers!